and then I guess uh, I guess cold mic open. Is there anything you want to talk about? Ah, oh, the ongoing circus of the U.S. election. Do you want to talk about this ongoing circus election? <laughs> uh, uh, I guess it's interesting and appreciative about um, Australian um, voting system. Yeah, that you know, male voting system works in Australia because when we had the recent uh, election in, in Queensland, mm. I I requested a a male ballot. Yep, and so therefore it's trackable and traceable. Yeah. Whereas what has happened, I guess, in America is that, oh, COVID's happened. We're going to blanket, blanket, shoot out all shoot. these. We're all going these. to mass print and mass mail out all these ballots. And we, oh, we haven't updated our electoral roll. In yet. a couple of years. Oops, <laughs> yeah. a daisy. Yeah. So, Doesn't matter. And then also, What's the worst could happen? And also e-voting. I, I don't think Australia has actually done e-voting. No. I, I've never did, seen it. America didn't do, I don't think they do e-voting. Uh, some either. do. Some do. Some have, well, some of the machines, I think they scan in there. Oh, okay. I'm not enough. sure. I yeah, all the Dominion voting systems. Yeah, yeah, you're right. All yeah, right. but is that is that they take the ballot which people put the pen marks on, and then they get scanned, or I think is it that, they go straight to the computer? Honestly, I actually don't know the system well enough. The problem at the end of the day is that the American model was designed, um, what do they call it? like the the twentieth century model for American elections. It was designed around the idea of people would physically go to the ballot box yeah. and p- cast and cast a vote. In Australia, I think also because we're more rural and we're more remote uh, and we want to include all of our uh, population. We've also got a, le- a lot less population that do, a uh, lot, lot, lot less population than in America. Mm. It's, e- it's easier to run elect- an election, but we've perfect, I'd say we, we have perfected or made a much better mail-in ballot system that works that is a lot more secure yeah than what Amer- where america's tried to rush one through and we've seen the consequences where you don't have an up-to-date electoral roll so people who are in different states people who have passed away that every election they rock up on the electoral roll yes and they get votes and i think well they get the option to vote and people are voting in their name and you go that's a bit weird what's going on there and, and also america is uh voluntary voting whereas australia has compulsory voting yes and you get fined mm. yes i know so, again I'm, I'm i'm of two minds of that one i kind of do like the american model of that you get the you get the choice the government can't fine you for not participating yeah but at the same token it does leave the hole of going did this person vote or didn't they vote or End of the day, there's some weird stuff that's been going on, not just for this election, but last election as well. The same stuff was going on. Yeah. It was just probably to a lesser extent. Yeah. Uh, and also, the country wasn't wasn't as polarised as they are this time around. Yeah. Where you've essentially got 70-odd million Trump voters who right now are staring daggers at Joe Biden, mm. and you've got about, a seven, I think, maybe 72, 75 million Biden supporters running around who are over-the-moon happy. Yeah. Staring daggers at Trump for sticking around in the White House. Oh, oh we'll find out. We think, will I find think, out. I think there's going to be certification of the the votes by the states. I think so. Yeah. This week. So. Yeah. Oh. Well, we'll see what happens. Like Trump's do, Trump's doing doing the legal challenges, which is his right. But at the same token, if the courts come back and say, "Yeah, sorry, mate, you lost the election," Joe Biden's the president, and that's it. You. <laughs> You, like, I think, actually, what, during the Supreme Court nomination, Trump made the, probably, call it prophetic uh, uh, point of elections have consequences. Sometimes you lose, sometimes you don't. Yeah. Or some, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. And it's, uh, sometimes tr- sometimes you win the election, and sometimes you lose the election. That's just how it works. And sometimes, maybe this time around, Bi- Biden seems to have won the game as an, ele- an election is a game. He won the game, and that's about it. Yeah. But we'll see. We will see what happens. We will see. Well. All right, guys, uh, welcome back to The Fire in the Desert with myself, Johnny, and Pat. How are you going, Pat? Oh, doing pretty good for this evening. How are you doing? Yeah, good. 
so we'll start off with the video and it's from uh, August 20 and it's with the Black Lives protesters harassing a woman at a cafe. They're raising their fists in the air and they're chanting, no justice, no peace, but the woman is not putting her hands up, so I'll play it up for you guys. Have you seen this one? Yeah, I have. So, you know, what are you seeing here? A whole bunch of Black Lives Matter people. Yep, all the protesters. Raising their fists in the air. Black Harass- Panthers style. Demand, demanding sub- submit. They're in the face. Yeah, oh yeah, they're within... Per, was it um, social distancing? <laughs> well, they've got the masks on. Okay? Yeah. Uh, I don't know about the social distancing. Yeah. No, it's not social distancing. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of white folks in there. Yeah. I oh, I know, yeah. Like, Kind of crazy. Yeah. Like, good good on her for not... For not uh, uh, you know. Yeah, good, good on her for not uh, caving in. Yeah. Like, that, that would have been intense. All right. And I will run the next video. Mm. Uh, it is Kids on Climate Change. Okay. Uh, let me see. Climate change is mostly created by human. And I think that humans are destroying their own world they live in. Because we build more factories and we put out more pollution and there's too much pollution and then it makes the heat rise. The planet has less time to live, which means we also have a little bit less time to live. Our future generations won't be able to see what we, we get to experience. I personally can't imagine a life where I can't see plants or animals anywhere because that seems really scary. You couldn't even see the sun, and there would be like fog everywhere. I can just picture a wasteland or something, just like a wasteland with like tree stumps, and there's just nothing. I pictured sort of everybody wearing like masks to protect themselves from the pollution, (laughs) and I'm afraid that's like, if we don't stop, that's what'll become the future. All right. Yeah. All right. So that was what? Oh, that was WWF from 2017. Okay. And the what, ma- did you, what did you see? Oh, the ma- the mask thing was quite prophetic. We were, yeah. But essentially, you got yeah, it's about a, what pollution, not about COVID. There. Yeah. So what did what did we see? Well, we saw a bunch of. There was an interview with a bunch of kids and school aged children and uh, different ages, and they were all, I would say, terrified of the future. Yeah. I'm not sure what the question was originally, but it was probably like, what does climate change mean to you? And yeah. what does the future of climate change mean mm. to you if we don't stop it? Yeah. And there was what? Wasteland or there was tree stumps or there was fog everywhere. I'm picturing Fallout right now. Fallout. <laughs> like a, Fallout. was it Fallout 76, the Fallout video 76. game? <laughs> like nuclear wasteland. <laughs> yeah. But that's not climate change. <laughs> Close enough. It's, it's, it's nuclear bad, remember? <laughs> nuclear is bad. Was uh, my uh, was it Deathclaw? I don't know. Don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so the um, these kids just ask answering questions, but it it almost sounds like canned responses. Honestly, like I've heard the same rote lines of the world is going to end, humans are destroying the planet. It's like it's the same, the same thing. But what you're doing now is you're indoctrinating children mm-hmm. as your spokespeople. Indoctrination. That, so that's stronger word, is it? I, I would argue. I would argue it is. Like yeah. that's what's happening in the public. Edu- I think what's happening in the public education system is you have the accepted response, and that is being pushed on children, and and they're accepting it because that's what you do in school. Yeah, I remember it was overpopulation that we will run mm. out of food and we end up starvation. Yeah. Then it was also acid rain. Mm that uh, the rain would just burn us. Yeah. Um, I remember acid rain. Yeah. And then yeah. there was the ozone layer. <laughs> yes. Yep. That's and, right. That's ringing bells. But that was like, what, 1990s, 1980s? Uh, theories, yeah. Well, theories. originally it was global cooling. Global well, global warming, was it? No, no. It was, it was originally global cooling. You go look at the Time magazines. Right. They, bonafide, on their covers, they were, the world is going to freeze. That's where uh, Day After Tomorrow, the uh, Hollywood movie, one of the disaster movies in early 2000s. That's where that came from. Wait, so then... Okay, so there's that, and then what does... The, the ice caps melt, then we're all heating. And then it, then, it, then it was the Earth is heating. I learned in school that it was not climate change, it was global warming. Yeah. Okay? 
And so that was a complete polar 180 from cooling to warming. Now the word is it's climate change. And that's, I think, because the scientists are getting data on the Earth's atmosphere and one minute it's cooling, getting colder and colder, then it's getting hotter and hotter. And they're going, well, we can't make up our mind. It keeps changing. So it'll just be, it'll just be climate change. So isn't that just seasons? Um, I don't know. I mean, it could be simplistic and say because like it, people, I'm, it people is, say, it is oh, very simplistic. the Earth will all around the world yeah. raise up by point zero. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think they're saying two. Was, I, th- I think they're saying two, two or three degrees. Which, admittedly, based off the science, that is that would be a problem. The question is: Is that going to happen? At what point? Well, like what time frame? What's the and how much is this human? Is the human involvement? I think at its heart, the climate change argument there is a kernel of truth there, mm. but that truth is that yes, we are humans are be are producing more industry and we're producing more pollution we mm-hmm. should be doing more to manage it yeah that's there's a fair argument there that we should be trying to uh while we have an impact on the environment try to minimize the negative but also without compromising human lives safety the benefits that we've been able to create for ourselves mm. but what the solution is is being presented is very radical very extreme yeah and what it's now I think it's feeding into is it's now impacting the lives of children, making them deathly afraid of what the future can bring, which then they go, I have no hope. Yeah. I remember if like any of you guys listened to of my very first episode about the, the right to it was with the ABC, wasn't it, it? It was the ABC. And one of the kids came up and doing question times. I'm deathly afraid of this mm. will happen. And it's like, you're giving this guy no hope. <laughs> yeah, um, you've already taught him fear from the start. And what do fear? And what do fearful people do? Are they, well, they don't look for the long-term solution. They look for no. the short-term one. Yeah, it's what. Um, but they're Patrick easy. Moore's bit. It's like it's easier yeah. to protest than to study ecology and do your PhD. Absolutely. And be one with you know act rationally with the yeah. facts. But if you're afraid, you're easy to manipulate. Yeah. Because you're not thinking rationally about a problem you're acting on instinct and emotion self-preservation yeah so those when you're doing that other people can manipulate you to doing things that things that you wouldn't normally do but you're also analyzing stuff at a very surface level yeah and so when you see the headlines then you just go all right i'll join a facebook group or yeah. a famous facebook event and just protest along with them yeah not knowing what's the deeper yeah route. it's like uh, cause, I guess, or uh, or some of the contributing factors yeah. that lead to that thing. Well, the Black Lives Matter protests, for example, you've got all of these. I'm pretty sure pale skin people will call <laughs> will call them white people for the sake of argument. Yeah, protesting for Black Lives Matter, but they go, well, what are we gonna? Okay, black people who are African American people who are black are their lives are important, right? Like we're not gonna we're not gonna argue that point. So what's what's our grand solution, our grand scheme on how we're going to solve this issue that we've identified? Well, we're going to harass innocent people by standing on the street and yell at their faces. That's a great way to get people to your cause. I agree. Let's stop this podcast right now. And <laughs> <laughs> no, come back here. Well, <laughs> but um, but that's the that's the point of you get people motivated and engaged in uh, what is an import, which I think is an important issue that should be discussed and is valid yeah but what we end up seeing is the solutions the, the solutions and plans to these problems being very ineffective mm. or, in, or ineffective yeah uh, so I'll, I'll i'll keep i'll try and bring us back on track and yeah. say why is it relevant and i think it's these ideas in america and overseas you know uh, recent events in Australia supports the idea that whatever America does, it gets passed on to the rest of the world. So, yeah, we, we'd had a giggle when I said, you know, whenever America sneezes, the world catches a cold. But but I think COVID, and you can't use COVID in this one. <laughs> oh, really? Sneezing COVID. <laughs> um, I mean, unless you think that well, orig- originated from... China. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's so, yeah. So instead, instead of the China virus, it's the American virus. Well, that That could work. <sighs> It's like, oh no, I've just started a new inter- conspiracy theory, haven't I? Thought disease. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so stuff like you see with uh, Black Lives Matter, the protest about George Floyd mm. in, uh, I believe it's Minnesota. So the shooting there, well, 
Australia, and then the protests come into Australia. Yeah. But it's not, you know, our police don't have a track history record of shooting black Australians. Yeah. It's about protesting asylum, uh, releasing asylum seekers or mm. refugees. Well, the these is, guys, the movement in, got hijacked in, in, in Brisbane. And then also, there's also this bit later on that's saying systemic racism against Aboriginal Australians uh, uh, dying in police custody. Yeah. So they were linking with that one. And there then, was a Royal Commission about that, wasn't there? Yes. Yeah. And then there was also, you know, the environmental protests, as mm. you said, that mm. spread on to, to the kids in Australia. And then, you know, last year we had that sit down and the kids were all prote- protesting, walking out of school. And yeah, exactly. Stuff. Yeah. So, you know, these ideas aren't isolated to mm. one uh, country. Yeah. It's also spread out. Yeah. Uh, I will probably just, you know, I think maybe just take a little moment and caveat mm. that, you know, we, we want to voice our concern and that, yes, yeah, some of these points that the opposition or, 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 or these guys like Black Lives Matter environmental protesters uh, bring have some merit. So, you know, police reform. Absolutely. Rather, rather than uh, police brutality, uh, looking at tactics, that kind of stuff, hmm. a sustainable development, and that kind of, st- uh, and ra- rather than abusing resources, you know that that is a good point. But we want to discuss it in a civil way, and that means open dialogue, which yeah. means no name calling, no slandering people's character, and just because you know you disagree with how to approach a problem, doesn't mean we lack compassion or we wish to destroy the environment, which is. Yeah. Which always seems to be when I try to discuss these ideas that I get accused of lack of compassion or want to destroy the environment. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. I still recycle. I still care about people. I still, you know, yeah. support charity. I don't. I don't agree with how you want to solve it with yeah. your way. Yeah. So, so it's a classic. It's a classic case of we should be agreeing on the end destination, but we what where we differ is the way that we get there. Yeah. And that, that's the classic case, the model of two opposing forces reaching a compromise. As long as we agree on the end destination, we can figure this out. And also disassociating the person with their interests. Yeah. So if you don't like the interests, you still respect that person. Yeah, absolutely. One, one issue with that is that our identities have become intertwined with our political affiliations. They've become central to us as a, as a person. So if you attack my, politi- or my political leanings, you've attacked me personally. Yeah. So that's an issue. That's a, that's a complicated issue that we probably won't be able to tackle in this session. But that is worth mentioning as well. It's, that's sitting, sitting there. All right, so I do want to go a bit about, you know, we talk about the new religion, which is what mm. this podcast is looking at, this episode is looking at, and what do we mean by new religion? And I think it's not just a bunch of people bowing down mm. to a new statue and singing songs, but I think it's some of the, the factors of a religion or the capture, mm. the essence of religion. The the core elements of it, the yeah, essence of it. Yeah, and then, but it's applied differently, mm. and it's sort of seen in these movements, so... Yeah. Okay. The first thing I want to say is like, you know, it's a new perspective. So understanding mm. suffering, it, it's diff- it's understood differently. There's a new dogma given to you. It's recontextualizing in a new way. Is that yeah. kind of, yeah. There's a, there's a new apocalyptic vision mm. uh, as well as what's an utopian vision. Mm. So there's the good and the bad. Essentially heaven, and, a new version of heaven and hell. A new heaven and hell. Yeah. Um, you have your new evangelists and your new priests mm. that spread the message out. Yeah. So your spokespeople... Uh, you hold parades, you protest, you march. Yeah, these movements have a uh, given new meaning and somehow given new purpose to these mm-hmm. followers. And, and, and then people who oppose these or disagree with these movements, these non-followers, they are enemies. They are linked with obstructing you from yeah. getting to your utopia, and you won't. You aren't able to intellectually discuss and debate with them. Yeah. So next is also a new way of living. So first one, new perspective. This one is a new way of living. So there are things that are sacred and that you should defend. Mm. There are things that are taboo and that should be shamed and denounced, unfortunately, on social media. And you try to live the way so you can reach utopia or hasten its development, hasten its oncoming. Yeah. And you shun those that lead people to your hell, your Mm. apocalypse. 
So, so this is not a new concept of understanding these tribal behaviors and these new movements as a new religion. So a quote from Douglas Murray from um, The Madness of Crowds. Mm. And he says, even the origin of this condition is rarely acknowledged. This is the simple fact that we have been living through a period of more than a quarter of a century in which all our grand narratives have collapsed. One by one, the narratives we had were refuted, becoming unpopular to defend or impossible to sustain. The explanations for our existence that used to be provided by religion went first, falling away from the 19th century onwards. Then over the last century, the secular hope held out by all political ideologies began to follow in religion's wake. In the latter part of the 20th century, we entered the postmodern era, an era which defined itself and was defined by its suspicion towards all grand narratives. However, as all school children learn, Nature abhors a vacuum, and into the postmodern vacuum, new ideas began to creep, with the intention of providing explanations and meanings of their own. Mm. So you can shun religion that used to provide all these essence of you know purpose, purposes, meaning. hell, heaven, hell. Yeah. Your your evangelist, your priest, mm. that that new meaning. Your community, but almost. there's a vacuum yeah. afterwards when new things go away. When we throw them away, yeah, we've we've thrown away religion. Then we've thrown away the politics of conservatism, liberal mm-hmm. ideas, yeah, you know, the enlightenment stuff, yeah. And then now there's a, something that creeps in. Yeah, that fills the, a vacuum. It's, our, it's our founding principles, our morals, our values. These core foundational things that used to hold together the fabric of society, we've thrown those out and. You're right. We've left this vacuum, this void, and it needs to be filled. We, it, we're almost compelled, I think, as people to fill it in with something. Yeah, well, but I think it's sort of like we're still borrowing, or we're still breathing in the, breathing in the fumes. So, mm. tolerance, peace, love, kindness, yes. co- which came out from, say, religion. Those are the, the real- outproduct. Those are the byproducts. Yes, of it. those those products that came out. We throw in religion. Mm. We sort of put it with the political ideas. Now we throw in the political ideas. Yeah. We still want the kindness, good peace. Oh yeah. And so what? What sort of new mm. uh, religion creeps in, which yeah. will cling those? Well, which will bring you those values that we respect. Mm. Love, it's, love your neighbor, sort of ideas. Love yeah. your neighbor, but it's not based on the Bible no. or political ideas. No. It's now environmentalism or or black lives matter yeah well, well the pers- anti-racism well, the, kind of idea, well it's yeah. the pers- i think deep down it's the pursuit of we want the perfect world but it's an earthly focus where we need to make the earth perfect yeah. and one thing i think that a lot of the are uh, the monotheistic faiths what they what a key teaching of that they brought was that the earth is fundamentally broken and we still strive for a good to try be as good as we can and so and often you get this division between works based or salvation these sort of principles that you find in um christianity islam judaism but we've chucked we've chucked those out and we're now going okay well we don't have heaven we don't have hell cool that's fine we've all we've got is this life on earth and we're going okay we're going to try and make the earth heaven. And I guess what the end result is, we go, okay, well, we look around the earth and we go, well, the earth's a pretty crappy place. We've got sexism. We've got racism. We need to expunge this from society. And this is where we end up with Black Lives Matter, the, uh, the environmental protests, things like that. It's, the, it's an effort, I think, to try and bring heaven to earth or make or make earth the utopia almost yeah let's build heaven on earth mm. right uh so examples of these new beliefs and i think one of them is this idea of anti-racism mm. so it's it's uh it's not it's beyond not being racist yeah. it's now anti-racism yeah. so accusations of racism um and white supremacy so the examples you know trump is being accused of white of supporting white supremacy, even though he continues to disavow it. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know why people keep lumping this association with him. Well, it, might, it might have been something silly that he mentioned in a tweet, but it's more, like... More, look at, look more, at like the, more like he shot himself in his foot by yeah, being, know, being Trump. But um, yeah. um, you know, foot and mouse syndrome. But... Yeah. He, well, those that recent, you know, the recent elections show that he had a lot of share of the black vote, the yeah. Latino vote. 
and and, and in the minority vote. So mm. it's like it doesn't need to match up with well, this idea. Well, the na- well, it doesn't fit with the narrative. So the narrative is that oh, they're not real black people. <laughs> they're not real black. <laughs> I, 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 well, I, I said Kanye West is not a black person. No, no, no. That, uh, oh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think we need to look at Kanye West too much. But uh, it was, it was uh, Joe Biden himself. He said, uh, "What was it? If, uh, yeah. if you need to figure out who to vote for, you're not and black. it's not voting for, and you're not voting for me, you're not black." Yeah. That's like, uh, what? <laughs> that was that was a interesting moment. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Mister president of the united states of america well he's not yet <laughs> anyway the associated press keeps doing that um doing what saying he's saying not yet he's not the, the associated press say that say that he is president elect oh right okay gotcha but you're talking about the media only yeah. the states that can yeah and the electoral college yeah will which is the process yeah like is the process and and normally in the past it's it's a pretty surefire you look at the electoral college votes that are coming in the projections, and you go, "Yeah, we kind of know who the president going, is going to be." Now it's just too murky. But, but this is the same thing that happened in the year two thousand, well, Florida. With, sorry, with Bush and Al Gore. Yeah. Where the media projected that Al Gore was going to win, Florida flipped to George Bush, and suddenly George Bush, George W. Bush, is the president. Yeah. But that only happened through the courts. Yeah. And that was down by I think a couple hundred votes or something. So it was a really fine margin. Yeah. But yeah, it's the, the the difference now, what is this, twenty years later, is that the people themselves, the voters, are more polarized and politically at odds with each other yeah. and more divided. All right. Anyway. Uh what's the example other examples of accusations of racism. So we talk about sy- systemic racism, so police yeah. shootings, riots, uh, yeah. black cops, uh, I guess. Well, but, how or, does it well, figure the, out when you have more, you know, poli- you know, black cops patrolling these areas. Yeah, it's not the, the idea is that it's white cops shooting black people. Yeah, but you still have black cops also. Yeah. you know, and they're also being harmed. Well, the issue is there. There was this story of a. The story came out a, a couple of months ago, so I'm a little hazy on the details. So forgive me there, but a African American man who was a police officer was killed by the rioters. Mm. Uh, shot or something i can't again, can't, rem- can't remember his name i'll have to go look it up but it's like that didn't make break the news that didn't make the news <laughs> it's not newsworthy obviously not and i'm like what well when i heard the story i was like well that's that's really sad like why why did that happen why why is george floyd's death were uh on the, oh, i'll call it this way this might be a bit insensitive but worthy of this media attention but this other gentleman, and again, forgive me, his name escapes me, but he didn't even make the nightly news run. Oh, well, yeah, you don't. Even it's because it didn't you match. Know, you don't remember the guy's name. I'm, yeah, I know that. That's God. that doesn't help. But yeah, yeah. It the problem is that it didn't fit the agenda, so yeah, it, didn't, it, it, it didn't, didn't fit the narrative. Didn't fit the narrative. Yeah. All right. So what's the example in Australia? And well, the link the, the Black Lives Matter protest in, a, mm. in Australia links it with indigenous deaths and incarceration. So I, I I want to do a little bit of what is going on there, and then we'll try to uh, look up at what the certified or what sorry what is on the public domain, what is uh, spon- provided by the government, Australian government, uh, in terms of uh, resources and research and inquiries out there. Um, it turns out a lot of it's got to do with uh, health conditions, and and so if you go into the raw. Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody, 1998, mm. which you can see on the Indigenous Law Resource website. Um, the alternate uh, piece of resource I looked at was the Australian Institute of Criminology, which monitors the Indigenous Deaths in Custody mm. since the commission, which was published in February 2019. Mm. So leading causes of incarceration of Indigenous people is public intoxication. It's a, a big issue mm-hmm. culturally in Australia with Indigenous people being drunk in the public. Mm-hmm. And what's the trends? So almost half, so 47%, so about 68, of ind- Indigenous deaths in police custody over 1991 to 92 to 2015 to 2016 period were accidental. So 57% of which were due to MVPs motor vehicle pursuits, and 19% to some other type of pursuit, uh, e.g. foot pursuit. 
the next most common amount of death was natural cause, 21%, followed by self-inflicted deaths, 19%, and less than 10% were due to justifiable homicide, followed by unlawful homicide, so 7% for justifiable, uh, 5% for unlawful homicide. Mm. So the conclusion of the you know, of the Royal Commission, so... Uh, in 1991, the RCIA DIC, so Royal Commission into Indigenous Aboriginal Deaths in Custody, that's a long one, uh, concluded indigenous, indigenous people were no more likely to die in custody than non-Indigenous people, but were significantly more likely to be arrested and imprisoned. The same remains true today. Mm. Next point. Indigenous people are now less likely than non-Indigenous people to die in custody, largely due to decrease in the death rate of indigenous prisoners from 1999 to 2000 to 2005 to 2006 so we're actually improving right mm. so less less people dying uh, less indigenous people dying yeah so since 2003 to 2004 non-indigenous people have been on average 1.6 times more likely to die in prison custody than indigenous people more recently there has been a narrowing in the gap mm. largely due to an increase in the death rate of indigenous prisoners from 2013 to 2014 yet the death rate of indigenous prisoners has been consistently lower than that of non-indigenous prisoners since 2003 to 2004 while less can be said about the trends for indigenous deaths in police custody due to the relatively small number of indigenous deaths in police custody e each year and rates that cannot currently be calculated, some clear patterns have emerged. Between 1991 to 92 and 2015 to 2016, 146 indigenous deaths in police custody occurred, representing 20% of all deaths in police custody. One in every two, that's 47%, indigenous deaths in police custody were classified as an accident, followed by deaths from natural causes, 21%, and self-inflicted deaths, 19%. One in two accidental deaths were due to MVPs, that's the motor vehicle pursuits, and mm -hmm. one in five were due to some other type of pursuit. The number of indigenous hanging deaths in police custody were relatively small, and with no indigenous, indigenous deaths hanging deaths occurring since 2008 to 2009. So we're actually improving in um, no more uh, self-harm. Yeah. The number of indigenous deaths resulting from gunshot wounds were also relatively small, and it will be smaller proportionally than non-Indigenous deaths mm. than in police custodies. So less Indigenous people are being shot. Yeah. So we've got st so we've got statistics backing up that yeah. the narrative that our police force is systemically racist and yeah. that we're that the police are out to kill Aboriginal. Well, they're people. targeting these guys. Because of the skin uh, skin color, that's essentially yeah. the argument. But the statistics, the the statistics that were that are presented here, tell a very different tell a very different narrative. Uh, I was talking way too much. Oh, that's all good. That's all good. I was like, what? Yeah. Oh, wh wh while you were talking, I was um I was looking up that case I was citing earlier. Uh, David Dorn was the um, he was a retired police officer. Yep. Um. Maybe we can slide slide that in there somewhere. I don't well, know. We didn't talk about it now. Well, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that that story I was citing earlier, uh, beauty beauty of the internet. I'm able to search it up within about five seconds. But his name was uh, David Dawn, African American retired uh, police captain. Yeah. Fatally shot by a protester or well, looter who was uh, trying to steal stuff from a local pawn shop. Which state? Missouri, sa uh, sa same state, I believe, as George Floyd. I'm just checking. That was George Floyd in Missouri. I'm just trying. To, again, just try to check that now. Minneapolis. Minneapolis is in Minnesota. Uh, Minneapolis is Minnesota. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I wasn't. Right. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah. So, but hey, tra tragic story, like unnecessary death. What is appealing about the new movements? 
Their arguments and solutions appear to make sense on first impression. The cause for suffering is because we are guilty of some offence that oppresses the weak or that destroys the world. There's a new utopia, a new hell. Anyone who obstructs the progression to heaven is an enemy and are evil. And if those who disagree with the new religion are labelled as evil, the new zealots are free to do whatever they want to get rid of the enemy, even taking the law in their own hands. It makes it hard to discuss the heart of the problem when your character is slandered. And now, back to the show. So and anyway, anyway, uh, let's go back to back back to the exactly. Indigenous Australia, where so the argument is, again the argument is that the police force is systemically racist, but if you look at the facts, if you look at the statistics, that should conclusively back up like it should back up that claim if it is true. Prove the opposite. It it runs against the narrative. Yeah. So so the this one I came from, the stats are read out from the Australian Institute of Criminology, uh, yeah. February twenty nineteen, uh, tracks the progress since nineteen ninety eight, and it's been, actually been less than that. Mm. But but this idea that um, there's a lot more deaths in in uh, uh, amongst Aboriginal people in a, in in police mm. uh, prisons, it's not necessarily linking it with systemic racism because what when you delve into the original royal commission there's some underlying factors in there which is the social issues amongst aboriginal people causing over representation yeah so i'll have to be very careful so i'll actually quote from the, the, the royal commission and i'll go through uh national report volume one 1.3 the disproportionate number of aboriginal people in custody okay so reading from that section the work of the commission has established that the Aboriginal people in custody do not die at a greater rate than non-Aboriginal people in custody. However, what is overwhelmingly different is the rate at which Aboriginal people come into custody compared with the rate of the general community. The degree of overrepresentation in police custody, as measured by the Commission's study of police cell custody in August 1988, is 29 times. In chapters 5 to 9, these matters and the implications are discussed in detail. The 99 who died in custody illustrate over-representation and, in a sense, are the victims of it. The conclusions are clear. Aboriginal people die in custody at a rate relative to their proportion of the whole population, which is totally unacceptable and which would not be tolerated if it occurred in a non-Aboriginal community. But this occurs not because Aboriginal people in custody are more likely to die than others in custody, but because the Aboriginal people is grossly overrepresented in custody. Too many Aboriginal people are in custody too often. By all the indicators, as has often been said, Aboriginal people are disadvantaged when compared with any other distinct group in Australian society and with the society as a whole. In these chapters, I discuss the economic positions of Aboriginal people, so that I means the commissioner. Right. The health situation, their housing requirements, their access or non-access to the economic base, including land and employment, their situation in relation to education, the part played by alcohol and other drugs and its effects. So, yeah, it's it's not systemic racism. It's some of the cultural issues. So, well, their economic situation. So, if you're taking these guys into prison and in incarceration, mm-hmm. more often because of something simple as public intoxication, sure. instead of taking them home, well, they don't have a home. Then, yeah. the, the, sorry, there's more chance of them not having a home because of poor economic situation. Mm-hmm. Then it's the prison or yeah. hospitals. Yeah. And then some essentially somewhere that theoretically is a safe place for them to get to sober up. Yeah, but, but then you're getting, but you're putting them into the system. And then you're not following up because yeah. some of them would also have, you know, if you 
if you're low economic household, yeah. you also you know eat poorer, you have a poor diet, yeah. not exercising as what, much. I think what the commission rightly highlighted is that there is a community or co- there's a community problem here that should warrant a solution or should warrant further investigation, further discussion and and endeavouring to try and solve some of these community-based problems, such as lower economic opportunities, issues with education, alcohol and drug abuse, things like that. Mm. Those are those are inherently things that uh, good things that we should be fighting against, right? So the commission has rightly highlighted that, but the takeaway has been, or well, the argument that I'm hearing from Black Lives Matter is that the country is racist. The police is systemically racist. Uh, yeah. Everything, or uh, our entire society, our entire society is systemically racist. So I'll go into that one. Um, and this is from a Guardian article in June 20. So we talked yeah. about Black Lives Matter in Australia. Mm. And one of the, it's a quote from one of the people speaking. So the fact is that the Royal Commission released almost three decades ago. So, th- so this person is referring to the Royal Commission. Mm. Uh, said that to stop Aboriginal deaths in custody, we must stop putting Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in prison. The Change the Record co-chair and CEO of the National Aboriginal Legal Service, Nat Sons, Cheryl Alex B- Axelby, said, overwhelmingly, state and territory governments have failed to take the necessary steps to do this. So she's saying stop. Um, they must stop going to prison. Okay. Well, I've actually looked into Volume 5 of the Royal Commission's the recommendations. So it didn't say stop putting them in the prison. Mm. Um, it says incarceration is the last resort. So right. you should prioritize going to medical, uh, going back to your home, having a social worker there to take care of them. Yeah, This is regardless of yeah. race, but well, it's only because it's exacerbated because of yeah. the social and cultural issues of yeah. homelessness, health issues. Yeah. This becomes a problem. Yeah. So I think, I think with something that is highlighted there is the community of people, family, wider community, needs to look after their look after their own and help support the, their own when they have problems so to of stop potentially to, i think to stop the the end solution being okay we need to put them into the judicial system the criminal system essentially <sighs> you know you're bringing some you're bringing me some uh, thoughts because mm. i was actually going through clarence thomas's some of his works. So oh yeah, he's yeah. the the, um, the black uh, Supreme Court Supreme Court judge. Justice, yeah, and uh, he got thrashed, similar to how uh, Brett Kavanaugh did. He got accused by of one Brett. Joe Biden. Yes, but, I remember. Uh, yeah, Joe well, Biden. I remember <laughs> hearing reading the story. Yeah, and, and, but one of the stuff he talks about, and you talk about, you just mentioned mm. is personal responsibility. Yeah. So he's a big advocate of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, he didn't get to his position mm. because of his race. He mm. he was disadvantaged mm. and. He worked through it and he owned it. Yeah. Now that's now I think it's fair to say that that is that's a, that is a that is a commendable, but also it's not a we. I don't think we as a society should just be adopting the blanket. Oh, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You'll be able to push through it. There are deeper issues here that uh, have caused psychological psychological harm to how people how certain people see themselves as well yeah. that does need that again this is a multifaceted and a complex issue but i think at the key at the heart of this is that we have a problem we all recognize there's a problem black lives matter is presenting a solution and that solution is fundamentally flawed i think that is, that, that that's is it at its heart. that is their attitude that just stop going to jail is something sending to jail well yeah if well, they did a crime and, exactly. I, and the commission, I, I didn't yeah. remember the commission said, you know, yeah. uh, for a certain time in Australian mm. uh, history, public intoxication was a crime, then yeah. it became not a crime. Yeah. But it's still sort of like, you know, public nuisance, that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, the, well yeah. Here's, here's the question, because one thing that Black Lives Matter has gotten really good at, I think, is dividing people on immutable characteristics, i.e. the color of your skin in this case. What... If a person who was white, or a person who was Asian, for example, or a person who was Latino, was found by the police and publicly intoxicated, mm. and if it, if that if public intoxication is a crime that warrants you being sent to jail, well, back then, back yeah. then, yep, is it should they be sent to jail? 
Whereas if you're Aboriginal and you're called by the police in public intoxication, you are told, oh, we can't arrest you because we're not supposed to send you to jail. You go on your way. That's not justice because mm. it's the law meted out it equally. And we've, had, and we've had those problems in the past, haven't we? Segregation laws, for example, in the US yeah. in the um, early, early, tw- uh, early 20th century. Yes. So how is this religious? And it's, you know, referencing you know, Black Lives Matter and yeah. social studies, as you point out. Yeah. You know, We're tapping into a lot of social issues anti-racism here. Anti-racism but... is mm. now the new path of morality mm. where to become anti-racist is the most virtuous. It's not sufficient to just be not, not racist. Not racist. Mm. You have to be against it, you know. Original sin seems to be about you know white supremacy. Whiteness studies, I mm. think, uh, is is quoted by uh, Douglas Murray to saying that whiteness study is the only one of the academia which can't celebrate its own whiteness. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have apocalypse that we talk about the new religion that yeah. is this white supremacy vision or Nazi Germany mm. kind of thing. Versus, or, the, or the or the European colon, colonists. Yeah, yeah. Uh, versus this utopia of a world all hand in hand. Yeah, um, and you can also tie then donate to these uh, movements. Cool. So what is actually happening is reversal. So you know Martin Luther King says, people aren't judged by their skin color, but by the char- content of the character. Yeah, it's now we need to have these special movements for these people, yeah. and then for these other racial people. So you're actually intru- reintroducing discrimination mm. and also resegregating people. Yeah. Um, Why do you think we've come to there though? I think it's just the easiest way to sort of. It's easier to live in that way. I think it's I think it's because we threw out our traditions, our values, our morality, our moral, our morality yeah. that got us to the point where, hey guys, slavery slavery is bad. Let's let's get rid of this stain on us as a society and a people and get rid of this. We got that from a mor- from a a moral compulsion that there was a mo- there was moral harm being done that we needed to solve. But we've thrown out our, our moral foundations. We still have, don't lie, don't cheat, be good to others. We still have these these ideas, but they lack foundation. They yeah. lack a base. But now we see more protests, and you know, look at Martin Luther King's one. It's all hand in hand. Um, you know, mm. there are no working together. There's no violence. But now it's like you, you saw the video. Yeah, we saw it. Beginning was they're all chanting in her face, mm. fists in the air going right up close to her that's yeah. that's the opposite of what's actually happening it's the malcolm x approach malcolm x martin luther king two sides of the uh, both prominent figures in the in the 1960s civil rights movement two complete polar opposites yeah. in their approach one pacifist one aggressive mm-hmm. uh environmentalism is the other bit mm. and we saw an example from the previous episode of yeah. the Greenpeace dropout, mm. and we had this apocalypse mm. that is desert, extreme heat, yeah. flooding, ice mm. caps melting. So it's hot mm. or it's cold. Yeah. Or it's, sorry, hot or it's wet. Then you have snow. Mm. It's going to be freezing all over. Which is it? And you know, how is it religious? And you have this idea of original sin, human development. Mm. Any consumption of the earth resources is bad. Your priests are the new climate scientists, the environmentalists. As a, as a new ta- taboo in sacredness, that is the forbidden use of nuclear, plastics, mm. or forestry. Mm. Well, even even you've got the the Mother Earth symbolism, the the nurture, the nature. Uh, we've seen that Avatar, before, Avatar movie. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, well, we, well, we've seen we've seen this before in the in nature worship, in nature worship, veneration of of the na- of the natural world yeah. as this deity. So we we can see this the. The, those that symbolism all throughout mm. yeah and, and you know what some of the solutions proposed by this you know the solar panels on the wind turbines yeah what is actually happening you're getting more expensive but inefficient power generation well you heard the story of tesla right just recently uh, i think it was like this week or last week which one is that that their supercharged batteries are doubling in price or going up in price so it's now more expensive to charge your car, your Tesla car, at one of their Tesla uh, st- charging stations than it is to fill up your car with petrol. <laughs> I kid you not. 
granted, this is fa- granted this is fast the, their fast charging variant. So I think that their standard charging variant hasn't changed. But what it's highlighting is it's the ability to run electrically powered electric powered cars is not cost effective in the long term. That Tesla can't run this as a charity. They've got to make money to to keep themselves alive. Yeah, and and, and even then, like you know, the act of plugging in something you're not seeing the fossil fuels burning in there or the, the carbon dioxide leaking out i don't know about you but i see that all the time <laughs> well it looks clean <laughs> yeah right? but yeah. then who's supplying that power yeah that's the thing is it the coal the coal fire power plant yeah uh, or the, the, the nuclear, the nuclear, the nuclear, the nuclear power i don't plant. know <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's that's right we need, that's right as a, as a graphic designer we need to put icons on all of the electrical appliances to say where the electricity comes from. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's but, good. But, but this, this is a wind turbine, right? Because electric power point. It's a grid. So it all goes into one grid. Yeah. Right. And and again, the the argument of hey, we should be mixing, having a mix of coal and wind and solar. The problem is that the solution being presented is coal is bad. Coal is evil. No more coal. And if you need to build a new coal fire power station, no, you're bad. You're you are you are a you're a heretic. You're a, you're an evil person who wants to bring on the apocalypse. No, coal is natural. It came before probably humans were came along. Yeah. Well. Any anyway, but <laughs> it's the the solution that's being put forward doesn't work. Yeah. That's the problem. All right. So I'll go into why. Why yeah. is this new religion, and what change our perceptions? Mm. And what led to these major social unrests? Yeah. And the idea is that it's looking at these uh, 2008, you know, financial crisis. That the ideas have always existed pre 2008, mm. but because of the social unrest, economic unrest, mm. um, people are demoralized. Yeah. They are looking for new ideas, mm. and these are seductive new ideas that they blame people they're looking for hope the enemy. And, yeah. they're looking for hope and meaning something to put this they've got a void right yeah. i was mentioning this earlier where i think that there's a void that we're trying to fill yeah. and they're desperately trying to look for something to fight for yeah and we've spoke we've spoken about this a couple of times of we're looking for meaning we're looking for purpose yeah and these movements are just happily going we want people to join our cause Join us. We will give you this purpose and meaning that you so desperately desire. Yeah. So I'll quickly read out from there. And it is all from Douglas Murray's um, Madness of Criminals. Yeah. Although the foundations, so referencing the grand narratives of postmodernism, has been laid for several decades, it is only since the financial crash of 2008 that there has been a march into the mainstream ideas that were previously known solely on the obscurest fringes of academia. The attractions of this new set of beliefs are obvious enough. It is not clear why a generation which can't accumulate capital should have any great love of capitalism. And it isn't hard to work out why a generation who believe they may never own a home can be attracted to an ideological worldview which promises to sort out every iniquity, not just in their own lives, but mm-hmm. every inequity on earth. The interpretation of the world through the lens of social justice, identity group, politics, and intersectionalism is probably the most audacious and more and comprehensive effort since the end of the Cold War at creating a new ideology. So if you can't trust big banks or trust your big institutions yeah. and you're seeing the banks get away with it, mm. then you say, well, what's presented to me, what's normal you've lost, is you've lost right. faith in the, You've lost faith in the secular, in the secular world and the system yeah. that promised the Star Trek utopia. <laughs> Star Trek utopia. The pretty, new republic, pretty, pretty, pretty much, pretty much. But well, well, the start, the Star Trek utopian vision is that it's a non-scarcity world where everything, everything on Earth, no war, no sexism, no racism. It's perfect. It's wonderful. We've brought about it, but it's brought about by uh, human engine, the goodness of humanity, mm-hmm. essentially, that we get better, and that's that is optimistic, but it's not true. It's not gonna. It's not gonna happen. Anyway, uh, yeah, degradation of faith-based organizations. Uh, we're now post-Protestant era mm. before churches in Western countries have unleashed this anxiety. And then uh, we seek to make sense of what has happened. It's trying to understand what this social collapse is mm. and we'll believe any dogma and reorientate ourselves against those who are to blame. Mm. 
I think we've talked a lot about this stuff, origin, original sin, prophets, priests, that mm-hmm. the what, hallmarks of religion, yeah, essentially. Yeah, hallmarks of religion. And it's not Christian religion. It's not this gentleman religion. It mm-hmm. is this noisy, zealot, tribal yeah. religion. Yeah. And there is only my truth in all dissenting views mm-hmm. are heretics yeah. or complicit with evil deniers. Mm-hmm. And there's a new shame culture. It's move on from uh, taboo of sex to towards now sexism, racism, mm-hmm. environmentalism. You know, to be... To be called, a, I guess, if if you're living, a you know, a few hundred years earlier on in America and say you're mm-hmm. a racist, like, meh, whatever. Yeah, now, you're curious of racism in America. You are no more Korean. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so there's a new taboo, there's a new yeah. shame. Well, well, some other aspects, some other features of the tribal religions or the tribal religion model is that there's fear, there's control. It's there's an earthly focus to everything that's going on. And I think at the end of the day, it leads to manipulation, often by the leaders, manipulation of the followers by the leaders. Mm. By off, well, Essentially, I think it's by offering false hope, by offering hope, by offering their vision of the future that eventually, like the, like the banks, like the secular world, leaves you empty, yeah. leaves you still searching. Because eventually that void comes back because mm. you keep filling that void with stuff. And it keeps not. It doesn't fill that fill that gap anymore. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think about what's the solution, and oh, uh, it's finding you something tell me. <laughs> valuable to believe and do, and be in control of your destiny and working hard. Mm. It sounds like that, but it's like you know, rather than blame and destroy, tearing down stuff, it's you know, it's build so, it's, build something. Yeah, learning to forgive, build. And the power of including everyone and creating, you know, stuff mm. together is more yeah. powerful than destruction. Mm. And we saw that on the same day where the tear down statues versus SpaceX Dragon being launched into space and, you know, bringing back the glory days of you know, the missions to ISS because they shut down the whole ch- um, shuttle missions back yeah. in the early 2000s. And I guess trying to understand why is that, you know, I guess humanity is religious at heart, no matter mm. how much secularism we uh, yeah. adopt. So whether it's religion or anti-religion, and uh, I'll read out from Nietzsche, who's, who popularized the word, uh, God is dead. So mm. the madman jumped into their midst and pierced them with his eyes. Where is God? He cried. I'll tell you, we have killed him, you and I. We are all his murderers. But how do we do this? How are we able to drink up the sea? Who gave us the sponge to wipe away the entire horizon? What were we doing when we unchained this earth from its sun? Where is it moving to now? Where are we moving to? Away from all suns? Are we not continually falling? And backwards, sideways, forwards in all directions? Is there still an up and a down? Aren't we straying as though through an infinite nothing? Is an empty space breathing at us? Hasn't it got colder? Isn't night and more night coming again and again? Don't lanterns have to be lit in the morning? Do we still hear nothing of the noise of the grave diggers who are burying God? Do we still smell nothing of the divine decomposition? Gods too decompose. God is dead. God remains dead and we have killed him. How can we console ourselves, the murderers of all murderers? The holiest and the mightiest things that the world has ever possessed has bled to death under our knives. Who will wipe this blood from us? With what water could we clean ourselves? What festivals of atonement, what holy games will we have to invent for ourselves? Is the magnitude of this deed not too great for us? Do we not ourselves have to become gods merely to appear worthy of it? There was never a greater deed, and whoever is horned after us will account of this deed belong to a higher history than all history up to now. So that was yeah, that was Nietzsche from his book It's a Hop. So the joyful science you know even though we got rid of religion even Mm. though god is dead in a sense we've lost our place of reference so he talks about you lit up the lantern during the daytime night what is night what is darkness what is light what is up what is down what is hot what's cold Mm. it strikes a familiarity what we're going through right now so what is (laughs) i'll put it down there what is male what is female it is so why is it so hard to to understand these, these concepts that used to be just we'd call them we take that as a given right these fundamental touch points 
and this is a feature of the postmodern era, is that they have deconstructed those ideas and we now don't, we go chuck those out the window. Yeah. Uh, what is race? What is biology? Yeah. The things that we knew yesterday, we don't know today. Yeah. Or we, or we make it so hard to know today. Mm. You know, as you said, Biden says, you're not black. Yeah, if what, you, what, unless you're not going to vote for me. How, how do you change your color of your race? Yeah. Well, again. Well, apparently it, you can. So. Yes, uh, tran- transracial. Trans, that's, a, trans- that's the new thing. I think the interesting thing with Nietzsche is that I've heard, quote, God is dead, we have killed him. Yeah. Often used in the, as an argument for, or an argument of, of, secu- of atheism, of secularism. I think that while Nietzsche, was Nietzsche an enlightenment thinker? Was that, yeah. would he be described as that? Yeah. The enlightenment thinkers, fundamental, brilliant uh, intellectual people in coming up with coming in establishing the foundations for a lot of our traditions we have to, uh, of our what would you call them, like social political traditions that we've created today i don't think they were necessarily uh rebelling against the idea of theism uh, theism or uh faith or religion on itself they were they were pushing back against a cor- an old corrupt religion that had taken root and that had dominated the lives of people living in Europe at, in their time. I th- and I think that Nietzsche, with that, with that story, with that quote, the, the piece of writing that he wrote, I think that what he's doing is, I think he is that he is saying what he's saying with a mark of sorrowfulness or almost caution. Or It's a, it's a, word, it's a word of warning. Well, I he's think. gone crazy, or at least the, this... This, he, well, he this, his, this, his, his, his character is a madman. His mar- yeah, his character has gone crazy. He's mm. a madman. Mm. And I think maybe it's because we've got rid of God mm. or the religion. Yeah. But we still live with the guilt. Yeah. How do we deal with human yeah. guilt? And he says, you know, what sacred games do we need to mm. do? What atonements, what festivals or atonements yeah. do we need to we, play? We need to create our own our new religious traditions to fill in this gap. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, remember we talked about the sunflower, about, um, was it the ancestors of blacks? Uh, yes. Of British, yeah, yes. British slavers traveling yeah. to Africa in chains to mimic African uh, Se- slaves. Seeking atonement. Yeah. So And they were ceremoniously released in Africa. Yeah. Which appears beautiful, but it's like, hang on, you didn't slave anyone i mean your yeah. ancestor did but yeah. but you know what a sunflower comes to conclusion is that you're only responsible for your own sin you're not responsible for your yeah. collective sin or yeah. your father's 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 sin. father's father's you're constantly pay- paying atonement for every evil thing that people in the past have because done otherwise when does it stop because your kids might be doing that exactly it never ends yeah. i think there's a lot of complexity in that story in that in that uh, piece of writing and it's not just open as shut as god is dead we have killed him there's a lot of really interesting meat in there anyway closing thoughts closing thoughts um it is beware of the new religion <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it's also beware of its continuous development because it, it it's not firm it doesn't have a strong concrete uh doctrine yeah and it's making stuff up as it, it goes it lacks foundation that yep. you can put your faith so you put your envi- trust in yeah it's your environmentalism pathway it, it goes you know ban ban stuff ban forestry ban plastic bags and then oops COVID comes along and now we have to bring back all the stuff yeah hey, let's bring back all these plastic bags yeah. and straws because we need because of COVID you don't want to keep reusing them stuff. yeah but hang on I thought that plastic bags were bad <laughs> I'm confused <laughs> yeah uh, and then Religion tries to capture the stuff of the past, mm. the tolerance, the kindness, the love, but yeah. it doesn't have that strong, stable moral center. Well, well, my, my immediate come back to you, if you go, you should be kind to people. You should love people. Yeah. Why? It's not in my self-interest. Mm. It's like, you're, and then you go, well, what do we do now? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the other bit is forgiveness is always not, is not mm. always certain, so... Who makes that judgment? Who gives you that forgiveness? Yeah. And then it just seems to be the internet, mm. your peers, the crowds, yeah. and that is other frightful. Fl- other flawed. You're not going to get forgiveness. I don't. Yeah. I don't think I've, I've ever seen forgiveness. Yeah. All right. Your thoughts, man. No, I, I, I'd, I'd probably marry you in that. We've where we've thrown out our old traditions, our own old values, morals, 
uh, faith, and we've left ourselves as a society, as a people, with this void that we're desperately trying to fill it in with stuff. And you're right, they, they lack foundation. So what we end up having is this never-ending tribalist-type Lord of the Flies-esque battle that ne- that is never going to end because there's always a new hill to climb because you're you're pouring these movements into this void and it never it's never it's never going to end mm. all we all we can do is continue on this inter almost this intersectional march of constantly de- finding new ways to divide and subdivide and break and section people and quarter people off into all these different immutable attributes that you, they have no hope of changing, casting people as the heroes and the villains, uh, casting people as the believers and the non-believers. And I look at that and go, that is a recipe for disaster and a, re- and a recipe for, not for hope, not for any utopian vision that people might be looking for. They're looking, they're looking for heaven on earth and I'd go, you're not going to find it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's not it's not a. I don't think it's necessarily the final thought too as a hopeful going. We have the answer. I don't have the answer to this, but what I can say is I look at what these movements are offering. Going, there are a ton of problems here that we should be looking at with clear eyes on. Yeah, choose a different place to eat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. that's it. All right, awesome. Well, Thanks, uh, Johnny. Thanks, Matt. From today, we've delved into one of the movements that have crossed the ocean and landed here in Australia. We see it evolve to address some of the domestic social issues, as we call out systemic racism as a core problem to social issues. We delve deep into the problem and find that systemic racism is not the heart of the problem. Racial disparities in housing, economics, health have made Indigenous Australians susceptible to death in incarceration whilst intoxicated. The proportion of Indigenous Australians dying in incarceration is high, but only because due to incarceration rates. It is further complicated that issues of the community makes it hard to safely bring people home whilst under the influence. As the AIC says, I think what is needed is for more people to dig deep into the issue and not be alerted by the simple response of blaming systemic racism as a solution to solving complex issues. In fact, BLM activists have called to abolish the prison system and to fund the police system. However, what are the flow and effects of telling society that there is no repercussion for criminal activity and no enforcers? Finally, it's important to understand that these ideas are not new, but have existed long before. It was with the recent GFC that people have lost faith in establishment and institutions, that people turn away from religion and established politics to look for a new answer. Unfortunately, some of the new answers can be more disruptive and harmful as we see anger, fear, anxiety unleashed amongst the next generation. Thank you for listening to another episode of of The Fire in the Desert, conversations about life, society and culture. If you like us, please like, subscribe and share with your friends. You can reach us at Twitter at Fire in the Desert or at Gmail, thefireinthedesert at gmail.com. Music is out Foxing the Fox by Kevin McLeod at imcomtech.com. And we see you guys next time.